All right, good morning. Good morning. First, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, uh, Ms. Shepard and uh, thank you to uh, Coach Rahalzo. Yes, I do still call him Coach. Um, actually, what I want to start is by telling a little story uh, about experience. And I don't even know if you remember this. Uh, so if you mentioned that he was our uh, basketball coach. And so there was this game in particular. I don't remember if it was a JV game or a varsity game. But what I remember is we were playing in this game, and this team we were playing against, to say they were a little aggressive, bordering on dirty, was kind of a bit of an understatement. Okay? And so we were just getting beat up. And so then in halftime, we're doing a little bit of regrouping. And then uh, coach is like, you know, he's going, he's got his clipboard now, he's going over the game plan. Uh, and then during that, uh, he goes, gets through the game plan, and then one of my classmates uh, kind of looks up to him and says, hey, but coach, listen, they're just beating us up. What do you want us to do? And so then he like looks up with his little sarcastic smile and says, well, I don't expect you to kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so that gave like a little sense of calm, kind of came over everybody, and then we went out, and I don't remember if we won or lost again, but that's not what's important. What's important that in that moment, he made it okay for us to fight back. He made it okay for us to stand up for ourselves. He made it okay for us to take a stand, not just on the basketball court, but in life. And funny how things come full circle. I kind of almost had a similar experience on the other side uh, just this past winter. So I, I have two little girls. Uh, one is 11, one's eight. And, uh, and in my house, our, our joke is that, you know, you know, we're not raising little princesses. We're raised, raising either warrior princesses or superheroes. You take your pick. <laughs> and so we had this one game in particular. It was like the last game of the season. Our team was undefeated. This is on my, my, 11, my sixth graders team. So we were undefeated, and we were playing against the other undefeated team in the league uh, in what would be, I guess, a... Uh, they didn't call it like a championship, but we all kind of knew that's what it was. Right? <laughs> and so anyway, um, our team came out and we were just all over. We were just crushing it. But what ended up happening is that these girls were all like bigger uh, than our girls. We just had a, a, much, a, little, a bunch of our little ones on our team. And it was just getting real physical to the point that even at the end of like the, uh, end of halftime, uh, my daughter, who was the point guard, was coming up and, and, she was, and she was killing them. And they like literally two just collided on her and then like one through an elbow, caught her right in the nose, right at the uh, right at the end of the half. And so she's coming off, and this is a kid who like never cries on the field. I can like see like she's kind of fighting back tears uh, in her face. And I don't know if it's from just taking a shot in the nose, which it makes me tear up as well too when that happens to me. Uh, or if she's just upset, or if she's scared, I'm not sure what it is, right? And so during the huddle, during the post game, or during the uh, halftime huddle, you know, so in front of the whole team, you know, I kind of give like the standard sort of, hey, listen, we're going to play a clean game, we're going to play our game, we're going to go out, we're going to show them who we are, we're going to win, all right? And then we did our little cheer, the rest of the girls go on the, uh, on the court, and I stopped my daughter on the way, and I just kind of leaned to her, I just kind of, I gently put my hand around her, around the back of her head, it's like, listen, I want you to go out there and go kick their butts, do you understand? <laughs> And she's like, got it, Dad. <laughs> and so she went out there and did that. But again, it's okay to stand up for yourself. It's okay to fight. I just want to thank you for that little that, that little moment in time still stays with me today. So thank you for that. Now, what I want to do next, I want to talk to the class of 2019. First of all, congratulations. It's a milestone. It's kind of surreal. And it's, it, you guys are kind of figuring out, hey, listen, you know, my world is getting ready to completely change. And you don't quite know what that's going to look like. You don't quite know what that's going to feel like. Um, but you're going to be high school graduates here soon. So what I want to do is I just want to take an opportunity to kind of share with you, I guess, some life lessons I've learned. I mean, just three. Just three things for you. Maybe you can take away from this, uh, you know, your time here, and maybe you can think about going forward. So the first thing I'm going to say is figure out who you are right now. Figure out what type of person I'm right now. What are my strengths? What do I like? What am I good at? And then start to think about that in the context of, well, who do I want to be five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Because the time is going to go fast, all right? So think about who, who am I right now? Who do I want to be in the future? And then figure out how do I close that gap? What are the things I need to do every day that get me more towards that person I want to be? And what you'll find is that if you get very clear on that person you want to be five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from now, it actually makes your decisions easier. Because there are gonna be lots of opportunities, lots of choices you're going to make on a daily basis, but if you keep that kind of like what I call that North Star in mind about what kind of man or woman you want to be, that makes the next decision easier. It makes the decision after that easier. It helps you, know, it helps, it helps you see opportunities where other people see challenges. It's like, oh, you know what, hey, listen, this may not seem like an obvious path, 
to get me to where I want to go, but you know what, because I know where I'm going, okay, I can see how this road gets me there. All right? So that's one. The second thing I want to say is, keep in mind, start now. This world is full of people who are about to do great things. This world is full of people who say, I'm thin, I'm about to, I'm getting ready to. The people who really make a difference in this world are the ones who can say, I did. Look what I have done. Here, let me, let me talk to you about my experiences. Not my, you know, the dreams are important because the dreams are going to help you get there. But get going. Don't wait. There's never, there will never be a perfect time. There will never be a perfect time to start a business. There will never be a perfect time to change careers. There will never be a perfect time to start a family. You just got to commit to action. And by committing to action, you will be surprised how you will see very quickly the people who commit to action and the people who talk about action are going to be in much different places down the line. So just make a choice which one you want to be. Now, I'm not saying to go be foolhardy. I'm not, you know, I'm going to the pilot, right? So I'm not saying go get an airplane without taking a flying lesson. I'm not saying jump out of an airplane uh, without making sure your parachute is strapped on properly, okay? But to go back to this flying metaphor, listen, in, in Air Force flight school, Flight school is our, the ground portion is only six weeks. At six weeks, you are getting, at the end of six weeks, you are getting into an airplane, whether or not you feel like you're ready or not. On ride 12, you're going to solo an airplane. Either you are ready to solo that airplane and fly it by yourself or you're gone. All right? So commit to action, keep moving forward, okay? And then the third thing is uh, what I kind of think about as a gift, if you can try to, try to capture this in your brain. Um, I use this term called why not me. And what I find is that by having those three words, why not me, um, it gives me two gifts. Now, the first one I'll talk about is just kind of like the gift of resilience and perseverance. As you get out into the world, as you get out into life, you know, you're, you are leaving this protective bubble. You're leaving this protective bubble of Morgan Park Academy. You're leaving this protective bubble of your parents' homes. Um, and I tell you what, life's got some gut punches waiting for you, okay? And I mean, you know, life is gonna, life is gonna tr test you. Life is going to give you challenges. Life is going to throw things at you that you did not see coming. But instead of saying, well, why me? Why is this happening to me? Then say, hey, you know what? Everybody's going through something. You know, and it's just, maybe it's just my turn, okay? And by thinking about it like that, you're not gonna internalize, say, oh, this must be because of I'm a failure or because I deserve to have this bad thing happen. You're just gonna say, no, you know what? Yeah, I'm special, but I'm not so special that, that, that challenges don't happen to them. And so that gives, that gives you the strength and the perseverance and the resilience to push through. Okay? Now, but the, but the true power in Why Not Me comes in what you can achieve. Somebody around your age is going to walk on Mars. Why not one of you? All right? Somebody around your age is going to be a billionaire who's going to found some company that's going to have some impact on society. Why not want to be? You know, somebody's going to be a, you know, a, a, a global celebrity. Why not want to be? Someone's going to cure cancer. Why not want to be? Someone is going to master artificial intelligence. Why not want to be? So by having this, you know, for, so for me, what I found is that by having a why not me, that helps, me count, uh, that helps me counter the doubters. Because there are gonna be people say, oh, you're dreaming too big. Oh, you shouldn't be thinking about that. Oh, you know how you need to be more grounded. You know, your aspirations are too high. You need to be a little more realistic. And that's when, that, uh, unfortunately, that's what a lot of adults are even gonna say to you. That's what a lot of people older than you say. You know what, listen, you need to pump your brakes. Uh, you need to like, kind of chill out and just kind of accept what you have and just be happy with what you have. No, I, I challenge that. If you feel in your heart that you can do something amazing, then why not you? Because right? if, if it's not you, someone else is going to do it. All right? So you may as well make it you. So those are like just the three sort of things I just want to pass on to 2019. But I just want to close by just speaking now to the parents. So this is also a bittersweet moment for, for many of you. Now, I've only, I, you know, I am thinking in the future I'm going to be going through this in about six years with my, with my uh, oldest daughter. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to follow my own advice when I get to that point. Uh, but what I will say is that the fact that we're here, in fact, that you're in this room and we're having, um, you know, we're breaking bread together, uh, at least with this particular journey for this child, then, you know, your work is coming to an end. And 
successfully coming to an end. So here we are, they're graduating from this amazing school, they're going off to do amazing things, and they have, they've internalized what you've taught them. And, and now they're ready to be turned loose into the world to go, uh, you, know, you know, or to like what I say, go happen to the world, don't let the world happen to you. And so just rejoice in that, celebrate it, and just, uh, just congratulate them, and, but just make sure they know that there's always a place to come home to. You know, my, my mother's over here today, uh, with me, and, you know, and she still lives right up the street. I live in the Washington D.C. area, but she lives right up the street. So it's just—it's really nice just having opportunities just to come home. And it is always nice knowing that no matter what's going on, no matter how hard things are, that you know, I always had this lady right here that was able to kind of help me center, help calm me down. You know, you know, literally about halfway through basic training, Air Force Academy, I decided I was going to quit. And then I called home. She's like, "No, nah, it'll be okay. You'll get through it." I'm like, you know what? All right, you're right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and so just be that and just be that that source of safety source of security for your kids and uh and they're, they're gonna surprise you with things they do thank you <laughs>